I'm sitting here with a man who needs no introduction, but since I'm a huge fan of run-on sentences, this is Charlie Papazian. Ta-da! Charlie, <laughs> thanks so much for talking to us. Who was your guru? My first batches, my guru was hope and a prayer, you know? <laughs> I had nothing except a little piece of paper for a jot of down from this old timer who gave me a, re a recipe and I had tasted his two year old beer that seemed to be pretty good. And I said, oh, I wouldn't mind duplicating this stuff. And then I guess my, my first guru really was probably uh, Fred Eckhart came across his book, Treatise on Lager Beer. You know, there's what, half a million to 700,000 people, I think, uh, the American Home Brewers Association estimates <clears throat> that will make beer at least once every year. And that's, that's, an impressive that's probably pretty, pretty fair to say. I, I know that uh, a lot of other uh, developing beer cultures in other parts of the world would, ju would just love to have the kind of homebrew community we have in this country. I mean, that's what the foundation of the craft beer and craft brewing and the microbreweries and the brew pubs, um, you know, without the home brewing community, who knows whether it would have ever developed into what we have now. I don't think so. I mean, the best experiences really are not, for me, is not sipping 50 different beers in a, at a festival, but every once in a while you get, you know, a real memorable, significant, memorable me moment where you're in a beer garden and you've, you meet a friend, new friend, or an old friend, and you're there for a few hours, and you start talking about your lives or what's going to happen in your life, and you have a great time, and something else happens. And I mean, the journey is 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 as important as the beer. You know, it's just the the event, the, the, the socializing, the, the friendships, and things like that. So that's what that's the long-lasting effect of beer. Who wins in a competition or the best beer festival or BU bitterness units or what hops? That's all fun, um, but that's not really the la that's not the lasting thing that's going to stay with you when you're still drinking beer. Hopefully, when you're 70 or 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day of seminars, learning, and camaraderie, and now it's time to cut loose. Day two culminates in club night prepare for some wackiness and some costumes. Brewing TV takes you inside the belly of the beast. Journey with us now. I need more beer. What we got going on here is something real special. I'm sorry, I don't speak German very well. Oh man, I'm sorry, your costume fooled me. Can you describe your perfect beer in three words? Quick, easy, and dirty. That was beer, right? Your perfect beer? That's pretty much my perfect anything. How cold does it get in Minnesota? It gets so cold, yeah. Sometimes your beard freezes right over. Did you say your beer freezes or your beard freezes? That tall. Duluth, Minnesota, you betcha. What's the hardest part about home brewing in Duluth? The hardest part about home brewing in Duluth? Uh, getting enough hot weather to have a real cold beer to drink. <laughs> What's the opposite effect of that climate as far as home brewing goes? It's a great place to lager. And of course you know how to tell when it's an outgoing Scandinavian dude, you know? Because he looks at your shoes when he's talking to you. But I'm ching! Oh, hey, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. TV. Oh, I see some 
Excuse me. What are you going to be drinking in preparation for Ragnarok? Uh, Braggit. That's a good choice. Mead confers the power of Thor on the drinker. Exactly. Can you describe your perfect mead in three words, please? Alcoholic. Um, Got to be a little smooth and dry. But maybe just alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. This is MC Peppercorn, Maybach, Rybach. Trey Norman is scared, ladies and gentlemen. What do you have to say for yourself? I just need a few more beers. That's all. I think we're going to have trouble finding another beer here. Uh, I don't know. Seems kind of like a, uh, a square pad to me. Can you explain this to me? I'm a total newbie. We've got a uh, wheel here. If people can't make up their minds and they want a chance to win a prize or pull their own beer, they just give it a little spin here. And whatever it lands on, they can pull. Is this thing rigged? No. I'm going to try it. Big money, no whammies. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you said it wasn't rigged. I was on Imperial Smoke Porter and I got Ordinary Bitter. What would you like, sir? I would like an Ordinary Bitter. Would you like I want to pull it yourself? The, to, yeah. Hey, look. That's a great button and it's appropriate, too. Come back and pull it yourself. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks. My own. Thanks for coming out here. Thanks for having me back here. You're obviously a home brewer. No, I'm not. Would you ever consider make, do you drink beer, period? No, I'm not a beer drinker. Would you ever try to make your favorite beverage? No. You Thank can't you. make water, water because it's all nature. I'm a water drinker. You're a water drinker. Yeah. I wish there was somewhere else this conversation could go. It's, it's all about the, uh, social aspect of it really it's it's not about the beer because you can you can do a, you can go buy beer cheaper than you can make it a lot of times it's about the people it's coming here something like this and uh, hanging with my friends and having a good time I absolutely love this this is this is why I homebrew is just have an excuse to come and uh, participate in something like this At the NHC. Not six hours later, two clubs were back at it. Kraft and Ann Arbor Brewers Guild making breakfast. Kolsch pancakes and sausage. The beverage of choice? Of course, beer. You can imagine where day three went from there. Taking a beer nap, beer nap, beer nap, beer nap, beer nap. Beer nap. Everyone taking a beer nap. Next thing we knew, it was time for the grand banquet. NHC, day three. A red day dawns. Bloodshot eyes, quiet voices, sunglasses, Advil. Thanks a lot, club night. 
We're wrapping up this year's 2010 National Homebrewers Complex at the Awards Banquet, where we find out who brings home the bling from the National Homebrewers Competition. The suspense is palpable. It's always kind of a good feeling, always kind of a letdown feeling when one of these national homebrewers conferences end. It's been a long, strange trip. Thanks for coming on it with us. I guess I'd just like to thank the AHA, the local committee, for putting this thing together. All the people that uh, run around and make this event happen. It is absolutely bonkers, and we are absolutely exhausted. In addition to the aforementioned thanks, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our West Coast homies and sponsors, the Brewing Network. You guys are a fun bunch of guys. <laughs> well, that about wraps up the recap of NHC 2010 here in the Twin Cities. All for brew? Brew for all. Quick, 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 trademark this. Get this on tape. Get this on tape. What's, it's June 20th. It's about 9 p.m. Haparazzi. H-O-P-P-A-R-A-Z-Z-I. Copyright. Brewing TV. Haparazzi. Witnessed. Notary public. Damn.